Hey crafty fam, what's going on? It's Alex Vanover back with DIY Alex. And tonight I'm gonna show you guys a craft that I'm really excited about. And that is screen printing on burlap. So if you guys have ever tried to make like a burlap garden flag or anything like that, you'll know that putting easy weed on burlap is a total pain in the butt. And so I have experimented and played and found out a super easy way to do it with screen printing. I think it looks better and crisper and it's a lot easier. So I'm super excited to share that with you guys and show you what to do because it's just so easy. You guys are going to love it. So give me a second so that I can share this live with a bunch of our friends um, on Facebook and a few other places, and then we will get started. I'm super, super excited. So let me know um, if where you guys are joining me from and if you can hear me okay and see me okay. And I'm also in a good mood because it is Friday super excited. We have like very little plans this weekend. So I'm super excited to just relax. Oh, from Mansfield, Texas. Thanks for joining me, Christina. Very cool. Are you guys getting as cold weather as we are? Goodness. It has really dropped the past couple of days. Sorry guys, got to plug my laptop in. You can never rely on technology because the second that you need it to do something, then it just decides, nope, that's not the way this is going to go. Need to use my laptop. Has zero battery, always. It's not been too bad today. That's good, Christina, that it's not super cold. I mean, it's not terrible. It was like 20 today. Hey, Debbie, thanks for joining me from Alabama. Sounds and looks good. Awesome. Oh, good. I'm so glad you're ready to see it. Hi, Heather from Oklahoma. That's awesome. Very, very good. And if at any time you guys can't hear me, let me know. I have a microphone. I didn't um, plug it in because I don't think I need it. But if I do, I will do that. Oh, another from Texas, Princess Disa. Good to see you, my dear. Good, good to see you. It's been a while since I've been live with you guys. You're in Florida. <laughs> it's boo for warm weather. I hear that. I know. It definitely, like, it's that time of year, but I think I'm just not ready. I'm just not ready for it. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if it like sneaks up on me every year like this, but I swear every time it gets cold, I'm like, I'm not ready for this. Like, I'm not emotionally ready for Christmas time. I'm not emotionally ready to decorate my house for Christmas. Like, I am just not. But it is super exciting because those of you who don't know, um, it is my first Christmas in this house with my husband. We just bought our first house back in the spring. So I'm super pumped to decorate for the first time. So that's going to be fun. Um, but I'm going to have to start thinking about it soon because everything is going to be in a new place. I'm going to have to buy new stuff. Thanks, Michelle. Yeah, it's been a super exciting um, couple of months. So I'm going to, I'm excited, but like, I think I'm going to have to move furniture around to put my Christmas tree. And so I got to figure all this out. I got to do all this like stuff that I've never done before. So we were in, um, we moved to Louisville two years ago and then, um, we were in the same rental house for two years. So the past two years, I've just done the same thing over and over again. Can you guys see me? Kind of cut off the top of my forehead there. <laughs> That's a little better. All right, we're in business now. Let me share this guy. Yeah, so if you're just now joining me, say hello. Let me know where you're from. Um, we are going to be screen printing on burlap. So that is going to be really, really fun. Um, especially if you're doing like a rustic Christmas decor theme this year, the, and like burlap garden flags. I love burlap garden flags. I think they're super cool. But if you've ever tried to put HTV on burlap before, you guys, it is a pain, even with a, um, heat press. Oh, Roberta, you're from Texas too. That's three Texans that have said hello this evening. So Texas represents also cause it's earlier for you guys. Probably it's 8 30 Eastern time here. If you guys have been hanging out with me for long, you know that I always go live late on Fridays because, you know, life and stuff. Oh, hi, Mom. <laughs> Roxanne Pilter's my mom, so say hi to her if you're hanging out. But, yeah, I always go live late on Fridays, always. And I'm like, oh, yeah, 830. It's going to be great. I'm going to have nothing to do. And you know what, guys? I started setting up at 820 because... It always happens like that. And my computer, it's running really slow. So um, let me know in the comments if you guys have ever screen printed on burlap before. You're from Texas. You can see the cowboy star. <laughs> but you happen to live in Florida. Okay, fair. So like four Texans are representing. Look at you guys go. Look at you guys go. 
And you guys are, well, I guess it maybe depends on where you're from in Texas, but you're on what, Central Time? Is that right? I know Dallas is on Central Time, I think. I've been to Dallas a couple times. Come on, computer, hurry up. Yes, okay, that's what I thought. I'm okay with time zones. Okay, are you all on Central Time or does it depend on where you are in Texas? Because when Andrew and I, my husband and I were dating, he lived in Alabama. So I was really good at calculating Eastern to Central Time because we ran an hour apart all the time. It was crazy. San Antonio. Oh, huh, okay. Well, Christina says it's all of Texas. Well, I got it like a little right. I got it a little right. You started screen printing a month ago. Very good, Michelle. Okay, Oklahoma's on Central Time, too. So maybe earlier is a better time. I'll have to figure something out. Oh, El Paso area is different. Look at that. You guys are so big. I would imagine you would be in different time zones because just of the size of the state. You guys, this is killing me. Why is my computer going so slow? Because always. That's so crazy. It's so crazy how you guys can literally be like hours and hours apart and like still be in the same state. That's wild. Because I'm from Ohio, so you can drive like I think probably four hours pretty much and go like end to end. So Texas is like mind-blowingly huge. I'm sorry, guys. I'm working on it. My computer is going super mega slow. That's my big purchase for Black Friday. What are you guys shopping for for Black Friday? That's going to be my big thing. I'm getting a new laptop to edit my videos and stuff because this thing is slow. It's only like a year and a half old too, which is so annoying. You're getting a new stove, Michelle? That's big, that's exciting. Oh, Northern California, welcome Jenny. You've never screen printed, but you want to learn. You are gonna be impressed um, with how easy it is. Really. So there's one link we're sharing in the 651 Vinyl Facebook group. So also I have not gone live since my channel has gotten a good bit bigger. It's been um, growing like crazy the past few weeks. So let me know where you join my channel from. Did you see my screen printing of from multiple colors video? Are you from 651? Let me know where you're joining me from. And if you didn't know that I work for 651 Vinyl, like that's my eight to five job. And um, I do marketing and social media. So basically I'm on Facebook and YouTube like all day, every day, <laughs> which is so fun. I, I love my job. I get to do super fun stuff every day. And I feel so blessed to be able to go to work and um, have fun. Oh, and etching too. Oh, very good, Jenny. You're from 651 Vinyl. That's awesome. Yeah, I like it's fun because I get to go live. Sometimes I get to go live twice a day, depending on when we go live. You're repping Dallas. Man, Texas is killing it. Go Texas. Maybe I should take a visit to Texas. You want to work for a vinyl company? Yeah, yeah, it would be awesome. It, it like, it's kind of crazy because I think and talk about, um, I think and talk about social media like all day long. It's kind of crazy. It's kind of crazy. And I get to answer questions for you guys for a living. It was so funny. I, um, oh, good, Heather, you're from 651 too. Um, I was walking by customer service today and somebody was asking a question about a cricket. <laughs> yeah, I need to come down and visit you guys. But then what city would I go to? Like, I was thinking about that. If I did visit Texas, where the heck would I meet you guys to be all central? We just like have to take a vote or something because we like, I'd never be able to like see all you guys at once. Okay, praise God, the computer has worked. I've shared in the places I need to share. Oh, we're cooking with oil now. Um, so if I did come visit Texas, I don't know where the heck I would go because there are so many of you and so many different things. Oh, um, so maybe this is really cliche. You guys can laugh at me, it's okay. But I really wanna go to Waco and go to the Magnolia silos. So cool, I think that would be the, like the coolest thing ever. Okay, so I'd start in Dallas and then drive to Austin. Austin and Houston. Yeah, that might be like my best bet. We would just have to like do things a little different because there's no way I'd get to all you guys. No way. So you might have to drive a little to see me. But maybe one day we will do that together. We could all craft together. That'd be so fun. Okay, so I've held up long enough. Let's get into the screen printing. Oh, Deb, you'll drive me. You're so sweet. <laughs> that would be awesome. 
Oh, you love the Gaineses. I know. They seem like such sweet people. So it kind of sparked me the other day because since I'm on YouTube a lot, I saw that Johanna Gaines was walking through all of the people who were there for the celebration, which I think is in the spring, right? I think. Um, and she was like saying hi to everybody and just like being so sweet. And so that is definitely a bucket list thing for me is to just check that off and come. I also have a friend named Allison. I think she's in Austin. I don't know. I was in Dallas this past January for a wedding and it reminded me like how much fun that place is. So I need to come down to Texas. But anyways, so let's screen print with some vinyl. So let me know in the comments if you have screen printed before, if you're kind of getting into it now because it's becoming bigger with the Cricut. And if you guys have ever heard about the traditional method of screen printing, this is thousands of times easier, you guys. You are going to love it because it's super, super simple. So I've already cut, I know you can't see it yet, but I've already cut my design on a piece of vinyl. And all I did was size my SVG and I strategically sized it the same width as my squeegee. So I have a nine inch squeegee. Um, and so that's what I made my design so that I can swipe through all at once. Now you'll see in my multiple colors of screen printing video, I did like cover more than nine inches this way. So I just made multiple swipes to cover it all, but you can't end up with lines in your design. So if you can try to make it the width of your squeegee if possible. So I did that, my design is nine inches and it is mirrored so that I can put it on the back of my screen. Because the reason you wanna do that is because um, if you run your squeegee over top of your screen and it's on top, you can end up catching some of the vinyl and messing your design up. So if it's on the back of the screen, then you don't have that problem. So that's where I'm at and I'm gonna start with weeding my design. But first, I am gonna take you guys and put you up above so that you have a better view. So bear with me for just a second. If you get motion sick, give me a second. Um, let me get you up high so you can see straight over my hands and I will show you everything that I'm doing. And we might get a little up close and personal for a second while I get you moved over on my phone holder. All right. The overhead view is so much easier. If you want to follow um, on 651, Michelle, you can join our Facebook group, which is 651 vinyl, or excuse me, not 651vinyl.com, Facebook slash groups with an S slash 651vinyl.com. That's how you can join our Facebook group, and I post in there all the time. Or you can just follow me on my face, my, my DIY Alex Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash DIY Alex Vanover. So it's pretty easy to get to. And I post a bunch of stuff from 651 and we talk about it all the time. So yeah, okay. So I'm gonna switch you to my other camera. We're gonna go this way. And this crazy wooden contraption you just saw is my amazing um, contraption for helping um, put you guys over top of my hands. So from now on, I cannot see your comments, okay? So I will have to go back and get them. I definitely will. And I'm also gonna show you guys, I'll take you down at the end and show you how to um, set, heat set screen printing because a lot of you guys had that question when I posted that in my other video, you wanted to see me heat set something. So I will show you that at the end, but for now, I cannot see your comments. I'm gonna take my table down a little bit. I have one of those really cool Ikea tables that adjust height and I cannot see the screen at all. So I'm gonna get you to a place where I can at least see the screen and I gotta make sure you guys can see my hands. Change my mind. I'm gonna go this way so I can at least see you a little bit. Okay, so let me know how that view is. Hopefully you can also hear me better because I'm closer to the phone. So, First, we are gonna start by weeding our design. And like I said, I have already reverse, I've already cut my design and it has been mirrored. So it is backwards. Oh, let me get my weeding ring. Several of you guys asked last time about my weeding ring. And this little guy is from 651vinyl.com. We have been out of stock for quite some time. So you can also get it on Amazon if you are looking for one of these guys. So reverse weeding is kind of a confusing concept because it basically can mean a couple different things. It can mean that I have mirrored my design and I am cutting or I'm weeding the part that I would normally keep in my design. If this was HTV, this is the area that I would be keeping. So that's one way to define reverse weeding. 
Another way to define reverse weeding is to take your design and before you weed it, put it on some transfer tape and then work backwards and weed from the transfer tape. So there's a couple different ways to go about that, um, but just so that there's no confusion, this is also reverse weeding. So I'm just taking the little pieces that I would normally keep, but this is acting as my template, so I'm gonna get those away. And also you guys, confession time, I hate to weed. I hate it. I'm bad at it, I'm not very good. Even though I have my amazing handy dandy pin pen, I still hate it. If you guys are in the 651 group, you know that Troy also hates weeding, so we share that. We have that in common because I avoid it at all costs. But I wanted to show you guys this because a lot of people um, like debate over this or they're not sure what to do. So I wanted to make sure to show it to you. So I'm weeding on screen, but I'm like, I'm slow. <laughs> I'm bad at it. It's just the facts of life, guys. Okay. And also adhesive vinyl is kind of a pain in the butt to weed in general because it like gets stuck on itself. At least with HGV, when you're pulling pieces off, you can only get stuck to the carrier sheet, not the actual um, design itself. Make sure you guys can see that spot, okay? It's hard when I can't see you guys. Normally I have like a monitor hooked up and I do things a little bit differently. But that's okay. Hope you guys are having a good week. We have like kicked off the post Halloween. So we pretend like it's Christmas time season, which is crazy. This time of the year hits me in the face every single year. And I'm like, oh my Lanta, how are we almost at Christmas time? But we are. There's like two months left, seven weeks left in 2019, which is mind boggling. Time's just a flying. But I wanted to do a cute little fall design, even though it's not really fall time anymore to put out my garden flag, but it says like autumn, bre wait, what does it say? Fall leaves and autumn breeze. But it is backwards. That's how you use a weeding ring, except you can be a little bit more graceful than me. Um, these little silicone pieces push in, so you can just push in your weeding tool and like clean it off by dragging it up the sides. Or you can use your fingers like me and be a savage. Up to you. So in case you guys are just joining me, I'm Alex and welcome to my channel. Tonight we are going to screen print on some burlap. And then after we make the actual design, it's not gonna be dry for a little while. So I'm gonna take a really ugly sample flag that I messed up while I was practicing doing this. And I'm going to show you how to heat set your screen printing because a lot of you guys asked in my video if I would show you how to heat set. So we're gonna do that really quick. Oh no. So I accidentally grabbed the center of my L so I'm just gonna place that one back myself. Easy peasy. Might be upside down, but it's fine. I'm not worried about it. Like I said, I'm a crazy weeder because I'm bad at it. <laughs> I actually, I sped up the weeding part in my other screen printing video because I didn't want you guys to see how pathetic I was. <laughs> I'm really that bad. I just plow through it. I, and I have to say though, with the pin pen, it is a thousand times easier. So if you guys are not following on 651, make sure that you get on 651 social media and you grab one of these suckers, which is a pin pen. This thing is amazing. Makes things so much easier. It's not just a pen. It does have like a steel, um, steel needle inside of it, which makes it way easier to weed. And this is a weeding ring. Um, I got this at 651, but we're out of stock of them right now. So you can get them on Amazon. Okay. So we're moving on to the next step. My design is weeded. This is medium tack transfer tape also from 651 vinyl. And I've learned a little trick that has helped me recently. Um, you don't want your transfer tape to be super duper sticky. You want to get basically the lowest hack that you can get in order to make your design work. So what I've been doing is I've been rolling out as much as I need. Okay. And then I'm going to stick it to my shirt and pull it back off so that it's going to get a little bit linty, but that helps so that you are not working so hard to get your letters off. So I'm just sticking it to my fleecy vest 
and pulling it back off again to reduce some of the tack. And when I use this kind of transfer tape, I like to lay my design down on the transfer tape itself. So I started at the end and the goal is to get less bubbles. So you wanna be gentle the way that you go about it. And I don't even use a squeegee for this part because I used to make the mistake of wait, like pushing down, like burnishing, if you will, way too hard on this transfer tape and then it was like impossible to get off on the screen. So now I just use my hands and that is way easier. And then I'm gonna use a pair of scissors and cut the transfer tape off. So that all I have left is my lovely sheet of vinyl and my transfer tape. And I'm gonna try to get some of these wrinkles out because if it's, if it's on the open vinyl, it's not that big of a deal, but around your letters and like these leaves, um, it can leave like, it can let the ink underneath it and mess it up. So I'll just pull it back and lay it down a little nicer. Okay, much better. So I'm just gonna burn it with my hand so I don't get too stuck. And now it's already time to apply our vinyl to the screen. So this is my Speedball um, screen printing screen. This is the 10 inch by 14 inch screen. And I will link that in the description after this video. If you wanna order it right now, I ordered all my Speedball stuff from Amazon and you can find it in my screen printing from multiple colors or how to screen print video description. So this is the front of the screen, the part that says Speedball. So I'm going to flip it over and we are going to apply this design to the back of the screen. Oh wait, hold the phone, I missed a step. So then I have to peel the backing off of the, um, the backing off of the vinyl. And you'll notice that I didn't cut this part off and save it because the more vinyl that you have around your design, um, the less tape you have to use to prevent the ink from going through. So I'll show you what, that, what I mean by that in a second. But what I did a couple months ago when 651 had their 50, the 12 by 12 sheets were on sale for 55 cents a piece. I stocked up on just a bunch of like random colors specifically for screen printing. So that way when I use an entire sheet of vinyl, I'm not wasting anything. So I'm just gonna slowly work off this backing. Sometimes it's a little rebellious. And you just have to coax these little pieces that want to stay on. You just have to coax them back down. That kind of happens when you don't burnish really well. But I would rather work on this part a lot um, than try to like work the vinyl off of the screen. Because I have done that and y'all, it's a pain. It's a pain. So... Bear with me for a second. Oh, I'm sorry, we're stuck here. Sometimes your pin pen or your tweezers can be a good asset here because you can help coax pieces back down. But luckily the vinyl is pretty resilient. So it does a good job of like, you can move it around a little bit and it's not gonna mess up your whole design. Honestly, guys, this part takes longer than like the actual screen printing, which is the funny part because screen, screen printing is just like crazy easy. So let's talk about when to screen print and when to use HTV because that's a question I get all the time. So why is screen printing beneficial or when should you use it versus Caesar Easy Lead or whatever kind of HTV because it is kind of a lot of work for one design to screen print, right? So the best time to use screen printing is when you are doing a multitude of designs. So let's say you're doing an order of like 25 shirts and they're all in adult sizes. You can probably get, a, get away with making one or two screens that are the exact same and using it on all of those shirts. And that is a great time to use screen printing. Um, I would not recommend screen printing on just one shirt um, unless you are the kind of person who hates the texture of HTV. Some people, as thin as HTV is, 
still do not like the texture of HTV on their garments. And if that's you or if that's your customer, they're really, really insistent that they don't like that feel, um, then you can go ahead and screen print for just one garment if you need to. Um, 651 or, or adhesive vinyl is cheaper than HTV. So that's a good reason to use it because if you're gonna be using like 25 shirts, you're only using a couple sheets of regular vinyl. And so they're like 70, on 651's website, they're like 72 cents for a 12 by 12 sheet. So that's a great deal on HTV. And then you're just using the ink and the rest of your materials over and over again. So that's a great time too. Um, so, it's, so screen printing is good when you have multiple shirts to do. If you don't like the feel of HTV, or if you have a really textured textile like burlap because HTV has trouble sinking into all of the like, I don't know, I guess the weave of the burlap or even like waffly textured shirts, like, kind of like Christmas pajamas. If you wanted to put a design on Christmas pajamas, you could use something like glitter or strip flock if you wanted to, or you could screen print it because it would go beautifully over top the texture. So. Those are some of the reasons when to use it and when to not. Now, of course, that's always up to you. If you just really love to screen print, then you do you, my dear. You do it. Up to you. So, now we're going to apply the design to the back of the screen. And I'm going to do my best to center it, but it's not super important that I get it perfect. You also want to be careful about going too close to the sides because it is a little bit tough for your squeegee to get in there if you are like right on the edge. Okay, so you just wanna place it as like wrinkle free as you can onto the screen. And then when I flip it over, you can see the design says fall leaves and autumn, wait, no, pause. <laughs> it says fall breeze and autumn leaves. So now I'm going to go in with my squeegee and I'm going to work hard to get my vinyl to stick really, really well to my screen. So I just kind of initially rub it on on the back. You guys will see what I do with this in just a second. You don't have to do it that way. You don't have to use an entire sheet of vinyl if you don't want to. But to me, I got this vinyl for like 55 cents. So it is not worth me trying to save the edge because I'm going to have to tape it anyways. So I know it makes a funky sound. Somebody said that they loved the sound of my squeegee on the screen. So if you do, enjoy this. <laughs> so I'm using a good bit of pressure because you really want to push it on there. And then I have to work the transfer tape off of the vinyl to keep it on the screen. And I'm sorry if you are commenting, I will have to go back and see your comments because my phone is above my head and I cannot see it. So I promise I will come back and answer your questions and concerns later on. So it's the same sort of thing. I'm just gonna work it as I go. Actually, I'm gonna start up in this corner and peel backwards. Sometimes that's a good strategy is just to start in the opposite corner and then you want to go pretty much like 180 degrees backwards as you peel the um, transfer tape off. So as you guys can see, um, if you watched my other screen printing video, it is so much easier to stick your transfer tape to your garment or to your table or something to get some of the tackiness to go away because you want to use the least tacky transfer tape that you can find for screen printing. All you need it to do is transfer. You don't really need it to be super sticky. So this just makes it a lot easier. A lot of people I have seen, if you guys haven't ever seen the YouTube channel, Pigskins and Pigtails, she is awesome. And she uses paper transfer tape when she screen prints. So that's something I need to try. I'm not typically a paper transfer tape kind of girl, but I think it's probably a good suggestion because she's really talented. So makes sense. Okay. So that's all off there and I'm just going to tuck this little piece of vinyl over off to the side. It's not really important for anything, it's just keeping me from having to put another piece of tape down this side. So no biggie. So I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to burnish one more time with my squeegee. And 
then I'm gonna flip it over to the back and I'm gonna tape all these areas around the design because I'm gonna come from the top to the bottom with ink on my screen. And so the areas that you don't tape, like these areas in the stencil, are the areas that are, gonna, that are going to get ink to come through them. So you wanna tape off anything you don't want. So I'm using masking tape. You can also use painter's tape because I'll be honest, you guys, when I was practicing this week, I have no idea where my painter's tape is. <laughs> so I tried masking tape and it works beautifully. So as you can see, I covered the whole top of the screen with just that one piece of tape and then I'll tape down the side and down the bottom and that's all I need to do. So it works a lot better when you have plenty of vinyl around your design. Otherwise, you're using basically vinyl or tape to protect your screen. Up to you which you would rather use. All right. So we're completely covered around the edges of the screen and that is what it's going to look like. So let me check the comments and see if anybody has any issues. Anything? Okay, I can't see your comments. So we're gonna move on. Okay, so I'm gonna be using this garden flag. It does have like a cute little fringe at the bottom. So I'm gonna try to keep the design above that. And placing this is always tricky. Um, I forgot the trick that my friend Kayla taught us in a, in a past video for screen printing. She suggested that you line up the screen on your item before you tape. But guess what guys, I forgot to do that. So I'm just gonna have to wing it. So I'm gonna place it and then I've got the sides of the flag pinched on the back. I'm gonna flip it over and see if I can kind of try to line it up. I won't perfectly be able to because I can't see through it. So this is another important thing that I thought about with screen printing is that the back of my burlap is like has this stuff. I don't know what this is, but it does have a liner behind it. So it's not a loose weave, but if you get something like this, like this, um, like ribbon burlap, that's just really thin and woven, make sure that you put something behind your burlap because you're going to get ink through the weave if you don't. So just keep that in mind. All right. So I'm going to keep trying to line this up and I don't really want it to touch the fringes of the, of my um, flag. So I'm just going to have to wing it. I can feel right through here. That's where the top of my flag is. So that look even. All right, guys, we're going to hope to heaven that that is even. That's what we're going with it. All right. Well, wait a minute. Now I'm second guessing myself. <laughs> okay. Is this even or not? So ideally, if the flag is square and my design is square to the screen, I should be able to just square the flag and the screen and that should make things even. Oh, I can kind of see the light shining through it. I don't know how well you guys can see that on the camera. Oh, you can see it, great. So I can see that I'm kind of overlapping a little bit. So I'm gonna move this up some. And look how perfect that's gonna fit on there. That's gonna be super cute. Okay. So that looks a lot better. So I'm gonna try to pinch it and flip it the best I can. It may have moved like a hair, but you guys, it's a garden flag. It's gonna be okay. All right. So I'm gonna use black because I wanna make sure that it stands out from really far away. And I have this handy dandy basket, which I showed you guys before. Um, this was a tip from Pigskins and Pigtails, and this has been enormous. You can get three of these baskets for like 96 cents at Walmart in the pantry organization section. And it is perfect because when your squeegee is covered in ink and you don't want to get ink everywhere, this basket can hold it and it's like the perfect width. So pro tip for you there, Pigskins and Pigtails rocks because that is super helpful. So I'm going to be using black screen ball, <laughs> screen ball, 
What's that? Black Speedball brand ink. That is what you want to use for screen printing. I'll turn it the right side up for you guys. Uh, I get this question all the time and they say, do you need, what kind of paint are you using? The kind of paint that I'm using is not paint at all. It's actually ink. So make sure that you get this off of Amazon or wherever so that it is actually permanent. And I also get the question all the time, how long does it last? And I honestly don't have a garment yet that I've worn out using this ink so it's great stuff but the key is after your ink is dry you have to heat set it so I'm gonna show you guys how to heat set here at the end but after you let your um, ink dry I usually like to let it dry at minimum overnight because if it's a little thicker there can be some like wet spots even after the surface dries um, I like to let it dry at least overnight if not longer and then you heat set and then this stuff is permanent it's going nowhere so it's great stuff I can see you guys are commenting and I'm terribly sorry that I cannot read it because it is upside down. So I promise I will either come back and get it or I will, oh good, my heat press just turned off. Huh. I've been having it um, warmed up for you guys, but that's okay. So um, yeah, so I'll go back and get your comments. All right, so I'm just gonna use a really fancy <laughs> plastic spoon and that's how I'm gonna get my ink out. So I'm starting at the top of my design. I realized that my phone is upside down do you guys want me to turn my phone over? Is that hard to see? I might do that for you because that backwards is really confusing. So don't hate me. I'm gonna flip this upside down, or I'm gonna flip it over so that the camera is no longer facing you upside down. Because I would imagine that would be really confusing. So I'm just gonna turn you over there. And I'm gonna try to get it so that you can see it. What do we think, kids? Got it? Okay, so we're gonna go with this. So, now you're right side up, and I'm gonna start at the top of my design, and I'm gonna put plenty of ink, like just dot it across the top, because you can always put your ink back in your jar, you guys. So this is basically a no waste project, so you wanna be able to use as much ink as you need. So I dab a ton on there and I'm a little messy about it. Uh, maybe some of you guys who are neater <laughs> might want to give some pro tips because I'm a little sloppy and that's okay. I like to have fun with it. I'm like neat like most of the time. So I like to get a little messy every once in a while. And I, I'm trying to make it as wide as my design so that as my squeegee goes down over it, I'm not missing any spots, but I can always go back and add more. So I've got a nice thick um, line of at the top and then I'm going to use my speedball squeegee and and so the key here that I've learned with screen printing actually I'll show you guys an experiment I did it's what I've been experimenting with is how much pressure to use when you are screen printing on burlap and so I made a like a, a stencil that says light medium and firm pressure and if you guys could see all that at once, you would clearly see that firm pressure is the key here. So the thing with screen printing is the more pressure you put on the squeegee, the less ink that you let through the stencil. So when I started screen printing on burlap, I thought, oh yeah, I'm gonna need tons of ink. I'm gonna use light pressure. But that is not at all how things turn out. As you are dragging the squeegee down your design, you wanna make sure to use nice and firm pressure. And so I don't really know how to gauge that for you guys um, I would say that as you're you as you're moving the squeegee you want to put a little muscle onto your squeegee that's the best way I can think to describe it you know light would be basically dragging it but dragging it down but not pushing on it medium would be kind of pushing and dragging but not hard but firm pressure is pushing down and pulling the ink down to the bottom to get to make sure that the burlap has nice crisp lines because if you lift up this um, screen and you can't see very well then you're not really going to be able to lay it back down unless you have a um, hinged screen which would be awesome I need to invest in one of those um, but if you're using a regular screen you're not going to be able to put it back down so you want to try to get it right the first time so I'm going to hold on to the screen with one hand and I'm going to firmly drag my squeegee all the way down my design and I may have to stop if I have to add more ink but otherwise I'm not stopping I'm going for it oh so see right there I started to run out of ink so I'm gonna use some that I have up here 
And you can kind of paint it over the top if you're nervous about not having enough. I did do that somewhat in my practices where you basically just drag the squeegee down and just place the ink where you need it. So you make sure you have enough. You guys, I was covered in ink this week while I was practicing this for you. And then I like got on the camera and got like ink shy for some reason. So that may not be the best technique, but this is how I was covering it before. I'm just going to like paint it with my squeegee to make sure that it covers all the way and blends with the rest of the ink. And then I'm gonna do another swipe and fix it. So just hold on real quick. Okay, just being a little rebel in some of these spots. I have a feeling this is a little more challenging because the bottom of my flag has these pleats in it. You normally wouldn't have that when the, um, the other one I was using and practicing on didn't, and I did not have this issue. So if you're using a flag with a fringe, you may have some, some contact issues like I am. Okay, so I'm gonna start again at the top with firm pressure, I'm gonna slowly drag the ink down. And I'm not sure how visible this is to you guys, but I can really see the stencil through the design. So I know that I am going in the right direction because I can see the stencil well, because I can see like the texture of the burlap through it. So I'm gonna do one more pass, maybe two to get rid of these lines. Hopefully I didn't just move it there, but we'll see. Okay. So that's looking a lot better. There's a little bit of a line. I'm trying to fix this line. See, that's what happens when you have <laughs> a really wide design. It's a pain in the butt to fix. Okay. I'm pretty confident in that. I think it's going to look good. So I'm going to put my um, squeegee back in my basket and I'm going to lift up and let's see the results. kind of holding down my flag as I peel it up and it looks pretty good. I didn't quite get the perfect bottom contact, but like I said, I think that's where this little guy got in the way. Um, it just made the contact really hard with the screen. So that's all right. I'm not worried about it. I like the way that it looks and I'm going to show you guys quickly how to heat set another flag. And then I have to get the screen rinsed off because I can stain my screen which staining your screen isn't a big deal, um, but you don't want to let it set too long because otherwise the ink will um, clog like the pores of the screen. So there's our final flag. It looks pretty good. Not absolutely perfect, but I'm pretty happy with it. So put your questions in the comments. I'm going to take you guys down for just a second, take you over to my heat press so that we can get, um, so I can show you how to heat set. Give me just a second. I'm sorry for the chaotic movement of my phone. I'm going to put you guys over here. All right, friends, we're almost done. So there's another final shot of the flag. My um, craft room is a train wreck, so don't mind that. And there's my screen. So we're going to go around this way and I'll take you over to my heat press and I'll show you my crazy testing flag that I had been playing with this week. Sorry guys, there's stuff everywhere. Let's be honest. We're all real crafters here, right? I have a messy, messy craft room. I clean it up a lot, but then I mess it right back up again. I'm putting you guys on my tripod. Oh, and there's my crazy door of um, HTV. That's just my HTV, y'all. I have a problem. Do you have a problem? I have a problem. Also, I work at a vinyl company, so pretty much screwed <laughs> if I didn't want to buy more vinyl. Okay. So I'm going to set you guys right here and I'm going to move the light over this way. So give me just a hot second and you're looking at my Starcraft heat press. Okay. Oh, we're looking a little crooked here. That's a little bit better. Still a little crooked, but a little easier to see. All right, so let me, um, my heat press has an auto off function. So maybe if I do this, no, you're gonna be a rebel. Okay, so I gotta flip my heat press back on. 
give it a second to warm back up because it has an auto off feature, which is so safe and great. But when you're like a crazy ADD crafter like me, sometimes it times out before I get a chance to do what I'm trying to do. All right, let me get some light on us and then I'll show you how to use it. All right, much better. Okay, so while that's warming up, you guys, check out my crazy tester. This is a design that I pressed multiple colors over top of um, when I was figuring out how to screen print on burlap because I find it really important to try to learn the things I'm teaching you guys before I do it. Um, I just think that's really important. So I try to put a lot of practice time in there. And there's that same design that you saw on the kitchen towel where it says firm pressure. So on this one, you can barely even see the medium and you can't see the light pressure at all. I got it in blue, so you can't even see it. So obviously this is not a flag I'm going to decorate my home with, but I am definitely going to show you guys a heat set because that was a really common question that you had. So if you have a heat press, um, I heat set my ink at 320 degrees for 40 seconds. 320 degrees for 40 seconds. And you can totally do this with an easy press or an iron because it's not really about the pressure. It's more about the temperature and the time. So um, I always like to keep a Teflon sheet over top in case there's any ink that's not dry. I'm sure all this is, but just in case it's not, a Teflon sheet is always a good idea so that you don't get any ink on like your parchment paper or anything like that. Um, and yeah, we're just gonna, we're just gonna press it. Um, if you have an iron, just make sure that you spend a good bit of time over top of your design heat setting it, because again, this is what makes the ink permanent. The ink is not permanent until you do this. So just keep that in mind, because um, it's really, really important that you have that. All right, guys, so my heat press is back up to 320 degrees. So let's press this guy for 40 seconds. It feels like a long time, and it is a long time but that's what it takes to get it permanent. And then once it's set, it's here forever. And I love you guys, so I'm wasting my one garden flag um, just to show you what to do because I got a lot of questions in the comments of my other video. So I wanna make sure that I answer that for you guys. So. Oh, and I, I haven't seen, maybe while I'm waiting on this, I'll show you guys the front of my heat press. I'll see if I have some of your questions. Does that look like your room, Michelle? How cool. See if I can check your comments. Phones on YouTube are hard, you guys. I don't know how to look back at your comments, but that's what my thing looks like. And random flowers laying everywhere. <laughs> okay. Oh, time to pick it up. Okay. My lovely sample flag is all ready to roll. So and it actually did fine that long. Um, it even like the back lining to find and everything. So I'm kind of impressed because um, this back of this garden flag is also lined with like that plasticky stuff. So that ink doesn't come through. But like I said, if you're doing something that um, is just plain burlap weave and does not have a lining on the back, make sure that you do something to um, get that figured out. So let me flip you guys around and I will say bye to you real quick because that's really all I have. So make sure that you put any questions about screen printing in the comments. And I almost just dropped my screen. That would have been a sad day because it has ink all over it. So anyway, you guys, it was wonderful to hang out with you on this Friday evening. Thank you so much for joining me. If you haven't already, please make sure that you subscribe to DIY Alex and put any questions you have about screen printing in the comments for me, and I will be happy to answer them. Have a wonderful Friday, and I hope we can craft again soon.